Usaka Sakabo, welcome, bienvenidos. This is Roxana from Metamorphosis Rocks. I know I said that I was going to stay out of politics, and you will be happy to know this is not so much about politics as it refers to conspiracy theories and its purveyors. A funny thing happened after I live streamed the sunrise this morning. A gentleman who I see every day taking pictures of the sunrise, and I had a small conversation with this morning shared several interesting things. Let me explain. The man looked to be a very mild-mannered, sweet, good man, and if you look at him, he gives you that older hippie vibes, you know, the long hair and a ponytail, gray with age, skinny, dressed casually, always in a good mood. He's always at the park at sunrise taking pictures, and he's very nice to everyone he talks to, which makes this all the more infuriating. Not because we disagree politically, but because I'm tired of seeing so many intelligent people fall for this. He mentioned something called the Underground Podcast. Have to admit, I did not know what that was, so I looked it up. As you can see, this podcast is available everywhere. This is why the people who abandoned Spotify over Joe Rogan have a good idea, but it's not necessarily the best course of action against misinformation. How can I claim misinformation when I've never heard the Underground USA podcast? Simple. This man was explaining to me, among other things which we will get to a little later, that the thing about Ukraine and Russia was that there was no invasion. Oh, really? I asked. What do you mean? As it turns out, he says, the show went back to 1991 and looked, and by show I mean the podcast. Now, I have to admit that I was pregnant for the majority of 1991, so my memories are mostly of those months and all the shenanigans. And then, of course, she was born in mid-November, and I did not pay attention to most things. I told him this, and he said to me that the Underground Podcast had discovered that there was no written document about Ukraine becoming independent. Russia didn't want a war. They did not want to hurt anyone. They were just taking back what had always belonged to them. Now, as I'm talking, you're watching a video of me on my computer actually doing the research about this situation. This is not sped up or slowed down. This is actually the research in real time. And as you can see, it did not take me long to find the Balavesa Accord, which I apologize to those who speak the language. I know I'm probably saying that wrong. Let's be clear, this was not just about the Ukraine. This was about all the countries that were part of the Soviet Union. Said accord was signed in December of 1991 by President Boris Yeltsin from Russia and President Leonid Kravchuk of, you guessed it, Ukraine. Others were present and signed the accord which determined the Soviet Union was no more. The important members of the different countries that needed to sign the agreement were Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine because they were three of the four countries that ratified the original agreement to create the Soviet Union back in 1922. The fourth country, Transcaucasia, or South Caucasus, 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 I don't know how to say it, no longer existed as a unit. Now let's be clear, the original document disappeared in 2013. Or at least, that's when they found out the original disappeared because Stanislav Shushkevich, who was the president of Belarus in 1991, was writing his memoirs and requested the original. Now, let's see something. When did Putin rise to power? Oh, yeah, 2000. Now, this is just a conspiracy, but do I find it interesting that Putin took over and did not take care of keeping the original accord? Uh-huh. So, we come to the point where the question rises. Did he misunderstand the podcast, or did they actually say the document doesn't exist? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what matters is what the audience understands based on what you said. Based on the amount of people who are defending Russia's attack on Ukraine on the basis that there was no liberation, we can guess. But more importantly, I ask you, why do seemingly smart people fall for all these groups of conspiracy theories, which he admitted that things said sounded like conspiracy theories, and I mean the, the gentleman, without even corroborating? More importantly, when 
is this podcast going to take accountability for giving improper or incorrect information? Because at best, they didn't do the research, and at worst, they're lying and they know about it. Now, the answer is very simple about why do people fall for this. We are all busy and a little lazy, especially the older generations from my generation X and above. We're not used to necessarily searching every little thing on the internet. And let's face it, the internet can be confusing and at times give you two sides of the same coin and makes you believe both of them. Remember how I mentioned that this was just one of the things he said? There were two others. Buckle up, buttercup, because the weirdest part of this conversation was the logical conclusion. To him, I mean. He mentioned that I have to remember that these Satanists were kidnapping children and killing them to drink their blood. Sounds familiar? This theory, which has been peddled against Satanists since the 1980s, has been co-opted by the QAnon for quite some time, blaming the Democrats to be exact. The truth is that the statistics on children being touched inappropriately is alarming. Unfortunately, the large majority of those incidents involve adults that said children know. That is not newsworthy or, in all honesty, what the people want to hear. It is easier to blame the boogeyman, I suppose. Here's the thing. As you can see from the screenshots I'm providing, both Democrats and Republicans have been either accused and or convicted of crimes against minors. In some cases, the political parties knew of irregularities and because it was more important to win an election, they decided to act as if nothing was amiss. In case you haven't figured it out, I don't like politicians. Most of them are just good liars and or conmen, with very few exceptions. What I want you to understand is that once again, had these smart humans who are following for these conspiracies done five minutes of research, they would have found the exact same things I found with very easy keyword searches. Let's go to the last conspiracy theory that the man sent my way and the conclusion I did not see coming until after the fact. He mentioned 9-11 and how when it first happened, people were claiming that it was an inside job. And now, all these years later, it turns out that they were right. This search took a lot less time than I thought. And again, you're watching it in real time. Now let me be clear, for the purposes of this video, I did go to mainstream media at times to check for the information. I don't follow mainstream media and whenever I see them on my feed, I mute them and I mean Twitter. You're watching me go through the list of mainstream outlets such as CNN, Fox News, ABC News, NBC News, CBS News, oops, that one is actually blocked. I wonder why. Let's continue. MSNBC, CNBC, One American News, or OANN, Newsmax, and Breitbart. Yes, they're all muted. You know why? Because Fox, OAN, Newsmax, and Breitbart admit they're conservative media. The other ones claim to be progressive. None of them matter. All they care about is money. How do they get money? They do it in two ways. They spread fear and anger amongst their audience members, which is why most times mainstream media will only push racial tension stories where there is a propensity or possibility of violence. The second way they get the money is by advertising to you or promoting things to ease your level of stress, which they cost. Want to get rid of half the stress in your life? Stop watching the news. But, 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 Rossi, how can I stay informed then? Interesting question. You can watch limited news coverage is what you want is to stay informed. You could watch the headlines from several sources, both conservative and progressive, and come to your own conclusions. You could do independent research on the issues that matter to you, including speaking with people involved in all sides of the issues you care about. That, by the way, is my favorite one. Where do you find such people? They're all around you, online and off. I told you that this story had a twist ending that I did not see coming until he said it, didn't I? Well, here we go. You know who is to blame for this? Bush. The irony that Bush was president when the accords ending the Soviet Union were ratified and his son was president on 
did not escape me. But yeah, it's Bush's fault. He just didn't say which Bush. And then I remembered, who is Trump's least favorite president? <laughs> the Bushes. This would be a good time to let you know that Donald Trump has identified as a member of pretty much every party he could in his adult life. From the days when his father identified as a Democrat until Democrat, sorry, Democrat, until now, he's been a member of the GOP, the Democratic, and the Reform parties, and even had no political affiliation for a while. His followers hate most Republican policies, but they hate the Democrats more, which is amusing to watch. Here's the thing. Rarely do his followers even understand who supports or values the same things they value. And let's be clear, the reason why Trump kept switching from one side of, to the other is because obviously he went with whoever benefited his interests more. Now, in my house, we don't vote based on the political party that we, quote, belong, unquote, to. We look at all the candidates and their history, and then we vote based on whose values align with ours. There have been several times in the state of Florida where we've had no other choice but to vote for certain party candidates because there are two of the same party running for the same job. It is what it is. I have voted for Republican Party candidates on occasion, and I have voted for Democratic candidates more often. And I am not here to tell you who to vote for or what to believe. What I'm asking you is that if you value your principles, do the research before following anyone blindly or giving in to conspiracy theories. A lot of really nice people, including people I love and care about, have fallen victims to Q and other conspiracy theories. It is baffling to see people I went to school with, which means I know their grades, and others who I consider very smart people to have fallen into these. I'm aware that lack of time and sometimes patience has led them down this path. Unfortunately, they are so far in that they won't believe the truth if it smacks them in the face because they have been conditioned to believe that everything is, quote, fake news, end quote. I don't know how we are going to recover those relationships or bring them back to sanity. All I know is that this country is in danger from within, and all these conspiracy theorists and grifters have absolutely poisoned the waters. Do your own research, even when you're tired, even when you don't think it matters. Everyone is lying or pushing an agenda. The question is, which agenda can we believe? And with that, I say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons and my rock stars. And I hope to see you again soon.